friends. So in my application I have 270 records and at the moment I can search them all by title. So here I have the search field, I will search for hot fire. And as I search, uh, uh, you see there are the results that match uh, hot uh, fire in the title. It works like this in the post model I have defined a scope. So uh, here it is, I search by title with I like, so uh, case insensitive. And uh, it works okay, but if I make a typo like two letters R, then you see there is no search match. And we are all human, we can all make mistakes. And uh, at the moment the search works uh, quite well on one attribute. Now I could also add search by description, but possibly the search would be a tiny bit slower. But still I have 270 records and that is nothing for Postgres. But as your application scales, you might have 270,000 or even millions of records. And you would likely want to um, scale your search and maybe move it to an external service. So the first things that come to mind uh, are Elasticsearch, there's also Algolia, MailySearch and TypeSense. Now I've seen Elasticsearch installed in a few Ruby on Rails applications over the years and uh, I always felt that it's like a very very heavy integration that is uh, uh, hard to install and maintain and um, in the TypeSense uh, uh, website does this thing no PhD required so that kind of uh, resonates with me I don't have PhD and I don't want to spend all my life maintaining Elasticsearch um, anyway so we've got Elasticsearch there's also Golia this is actually a French uh, company and they uh, also work with Ruby on Rails there's MailySearch and then there is uh, TypeSans um, I found a nice comparison of uh, all of these options on the TypeSans website so for Elasticsearch it says that uh, um, if you've got like petabytes of data, like logs, then you might want Elasticsearch. Otherwise, you can uh, go with uh, another option. Now, Algolia is fully closed source, so it's just like an API that you integrate with. Uh, Mail Search and TypeSense are uh, open source. And uh, in this episode, we are going to focus on TypeSense. So here is the TypeSense source code. It's all free. You can uh, install it locally. You can uh, push it uh, to your own server. So um, on the TypeSense uh, website, actually, it was cool to see all the features. I didn't know that there are so many different uh, features around the uh, search. So obviously, typo tolerance, something I have mentioned here when trying to type hot wire with uh, a typo. Uh, then there's, uh, uh, I mean, search for by images, voice, uh, and uh, like conversational search. Is this even a thing? So there are so many, like, I know, businesses that, is, that you can even build around the uh, uh, search itself. And there are a few examples of uh, searching large data sets. So for example, searching songs. I will try to search for yesterday from the Beatles. So you see, I made some typos and it's still uh, considering the typos uh, found the best matching result out of 32 million uh, songs. So that's uh, really cool. Um, yeah, let's try installing TypeSense in a Ruby on Rails application. So here in my application, I'm going to search not only by title, but also by description. And I'm going to use type, uh, TypeSense instead of uh, the SQL uh, search that I'm doing here. So uh, uh, to install TypeSense, first of all, I'm going to go to the docs. So uh, go into the website, uh, docs guide, install TypeSense. So I'm not going to do it via Docker. I am not a big fan of Docker, uh, local especially. Then I'm going to run brew install TypeSense. And then I'm going to start the TypeSense server. This was fast, okay. It says successfully started TypeSense server and we can make a CURL request to localhost 8108 slash health. So by default, it started the uh, TypeSense at the uh, localhost 8108 and you say I made this request and it is, says, okay, true. Let's actually try visiting this URL. Uh, you see, so it actually has a web server running and it has this health page. Uh, looks quite cool. Uh, now, how can we interact with TypeSense. So to do this, we have this uh, gem TypeSense uh, Ruby. So uh, I'm going to add the gem TypeSense Ruby to my application. I've actually already done it. Um, and here's the pull request and we're going to go through all the changes that I have done. So um, here I added the gem TypeSense and next I uh, added an initializer. So TypeSense RB. Let's have a look at this uh, file in the VS Code. So I create a new TypeSense client uh, with a host, local host, the port 8108, the one that was started uh, uh, from the terminal. 
and the default API key is uh, XYZ that we are using. Uh, okay, so I've started the server and now I created a small uh, service to interact with the API. So here I have this TypeSense service. And uh, here I can create a schema. So TypeSense can have like collections of records or objects that you can search through. So I have a collection of named posts and the post collection has attributes title, body, created at, and by default we are going to sort by uh, created at. So we are going to uh, create this kind of schema inside uh, TypeSense and we're going to load uh, our posts into it. And the posts are going to be documents. So collections are like uh, tables and documents are records inside the tables. So I'm going to call this TypeSense service from our Rails console. Um, TypeSense service uh, dot uh, create schema. We have created the schema. Let's try retrieving the schema for posts. Uh, so uh, types and service uh, get schema. It's going to get the schema for posts. Now you see here in my service, it everything is around posts. Uh, then uh, let's try exporting the documents. So uh, kind of the payload of everything we have for these documents. You see at the moment it is empty. Uh, so let's load all our posts into the uh, type sense uh, collection of posts. Uh, to do this, I have also created a rake task. So typesense.rake. If you don't yet have a typesense uh, uh, collection created, it's going to create a collection and it's going to load all our posts into uh, the collection. And you see we have this command index post. So uh, for each post, we are going to uh, get the collection of posts inside TypeSense and uh, create a new post with the uh, ID, title, body, and uh, created at timestamp. So uh, I'm going to run this command. I can run it uh, uh, either from the Rails console or using Rails TypeSense setup to run this uh, rake task. Okay, let's start the console once again. So let's say post.count. We have 270 posts and let's uh, see the data that we have tried to push to TypeSense and see if it was successful. So I will say TypeSense service dot uh, um, export documents. And you see we have a big payload of uh, all the documents that all the posts that we have pushed to our uh, collection. Let's try getting a document uh, count. So TypeSense service dot documents count, you see it is 270, the same amount as uh, posts in our application. So we have pushed all our posts. And let's try getting a post by ID. So um, say post dot uh, first uh, dot ID and dot title. Okay, and let's uh, uh, run types and service, retrieve document and the ID will be six. And here we have uh, the title from uh, our Postgres database and the title from TypeSense. So you see it is the same record. Now we can interact with the TypeSense API, but uh, we want to be able to update the uh, collection of uh, indexed posts in TypeSense whenever something changes in the uh, active record. So whenever a post is created, we want to add it to the index. When the post is updated, we want to update the index. And when the post is deleted, we want to remove from the index. So for this, I created the three callbacks. So uh, after creation, uh, index post, after update, update post, after destroy, delete post. And in this types and service, I have these defined. So find the collection of posts, find the document by the post ID and delete it, or update it, or create it. Okay, so uh, let's uh, see it in action. I'm going to try to change the title of uh, this post. So post first dot uh, update title full 12. Okay, and let's find the document. You see it in the document, the title has also been updated. So uh, our callbacks work. Okay, now let's uh, go to the next step. So we have the TypeSense index. Now we want to do the TypeSense search. So uh, we also created this uh, command search post. And uh, we're going to make this uh, call to kind of the TypeSense API to our local TypeSense server. And uh, we're going to search the documents by these search parameters. We are searching by title and body of a post. The default sort is by created uh, at uh, descending. 
we add some pagination and the quantity of items per page. So let's try searching first of all in the Rails console. Um, I will say types and service dot uh, search posts and there will be hot via. And you see we get uh, a big payload. And now we can do it from our Rails uh, controller. We can uh, uh, synthesize the payload and display it in the Rails view. So here I have already actually implemented it. Here I have uh, the uh, URL post slash search and here I have uh, a search field. So uh, in our roots inside posts, uh, I created a collection for search. Then in the posts controller, I create this dev search. And you see if there is a query parameter in this search form, then we're going to hit the TypeSense API, perform the search, and render the results in a sanitized object of both. We're going to respond in JSON and in HTML. But we don't have to really respond in JSON. It's just uh, an additional response type that we can have in the application. Let's uh, even comment it out for now. And so let's search for Hotfire. Hotwire, you see the results are being loaded and each time uh, when we make the search, we kind of search not in uh, uh, the Rails Postgres database, but we search in TypeSense and uh, we render the results. Let's even make some typos or JSON uh, instead of JSON. And you see the results are being loaded. I can also add some kind of like additional uh, points from anywhere in the title or description and it's going to show the most relevant results. So we perform the search uh, uh, using uh, uh, TypeSense. It works well. Let's uh, try the JSON endpoint. Let's uh, try doing search.json. Uh, and you see we have the results uh, in uh, JSON. Looks really cool. Now, uh, there are a couple of more things we can do with the uh, TypeSense. So, uh, we can make a CRL requests with our API key to retrieve something from our collections. So, let's try getting uh, a specific document. Okay, there's no document with ID 2, but I remember there is a document with ID 6. And you see, we get the payload and we can also get the stats.json. So, the stats of our uh, TypeSense server. Uh, yeah, that's uh, about it. So uh, I'm going to leave a link to the implementation uh, and to the types and service that I have created in the description to this video so that you can implement TypeSense in your Rails application. And uh, I see that TypeSense is currently working on an additional integration except of TypeSense Ruby. It would be TypeSense Rails. It is going to be based on Algolia's Rails integration so hopefully the API is going to be really similar and uh, it should be possibly even easier to install TypeSense in a Rails application. And as the final step would be to deploy to production. So uh, now we have this TypeSense uh, server running uh, locally at uh, 8108 and we would want to push it to production so that we can use it in our real application. And uh, if we go to the TypeSense uh, docs, there should be some options on how to do it, uh, how to push TypeSense to production uh, for it to be self-hosted, but they also offer this TypeSense cloud. So if I go here, um, what's the pricing? So 720 hours is like a month and it is, uh, the cheapest version is uh, $21 per month if uh, they are hosting it, uh, if you're not hosting it yourself. And uh, another interesting thing I noticed, if you go to the login and go to inspect element, you can see that they are using Hotwire and most likely also Rails for their SaaS. So yeah, that's uh, the basic implementation of TypeSense in a Ruby on Rails application. I invite you to try TypeSense.